This is Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. We've had a bunch of parts arrive on the 73 Challenger, so we're gonna go ahead and assemble them. On this video, the plan is to install the firewall, the upper cowl panel after we cut them out. We're gonna install the automatic shifter and the console brackets. And then if we have enough time on this video, we're gonna go through the doors, strip them down, see the condition, do the repairs we need to do on the doors, and maybe get them mounted on the Challenger itself. Um, I'll show you a couple things on the doors when we get there, um, some tips and tricks, but let's go over some information on the cow panel and firewall before we remove it. We know that this car has been in a wreck, so there's some things that, measurements that I checked off this car versus the 72 Challenger behind me. We verified that, and I believe that this car was all destroyed up here and in some of that frame rail and you see it's bowed right here in the cow but I believe this is the last bend and ripple that took the impact folded in on itself and everything from here back should have been good the a pillars seem like they're in the same location and in the right place what we ended up doing I took my tram and some of the measurements we took that might help you at home was I basically took from the bottom of these a pillars where it dents out it it has an indentation in. We took our trim and I measured bottom corner to bottom corner on the lower indentations. Those measurements were 64 inches uh, side to side. And I marked those on this car. I also wrote them in a notebook, but I'm gonna try to keep these parts as notes in the same thing. Another measurement that I took that's not gonna really relate to you, but it's good if you're doing this project to take for yourself. I went from my frame jig here, which you can go to whatever your base uh, structure is, and I went to the top of the upper cow panel. That's measured 33 inches. At that point, our new cow panel shouldn't go above that, and that's gonna set our height up and down here and our curvature in the cow, which is also gonna set our hood height. So that's an important measurement. We are not, in this car, gonna move the factory VIN numbers over to the new cow panel. I talked to the owner about it. He's not really worried about this car. He doesn't care. I'm going to give him those numbers and they're for him to have in the future. But as far as originality of this car, or what he's trying to do with it, he doesn't want that. I'll double sh uh, check with him and talk it over one more time to make sure. But as far as that, they're going to stay off and go with him separate. Some other numbers we also took on this car was I measured from this corner right here on both sides now to where the upper cow panel the, meets the bottom of the window. So that's gonna be from there to there, and that was 22 and a quarter on both sides. I then took a measurement, since we measured the outside of the cow panel, we went from the inside up here, where it sticks out to the bottom of the floor, and I marked a spot there. That was 19 and a quarter, and then I also did from the center here, this piece, down to the top of the upper cow, and that was 21 and a half. So those are our measurements that we're gonna go off of. We're gonna use them as reference when we start putting and screwing our new panel in there. This should make sure that the window fits, everything's straight, and when we go put our fenders and everything on the car, that since our base is in order, everything should align off there. So let's get to it, let's start the work, and then we'll go over some other stuff as this process gets along. We're going to go ahead and take our air chisel and start removing the upper cow panel. For the most part, we're going to just use this air chisel. You can see it rips through these panels pretty easy. I'm not wasting anything such as grinding cutoff wheels. I'm not, you know, doing any spot weld drills. And that makes it easier to clean up when it's all said and done. I will say right before I started this project, I did sharpen the chisel blade. Um, I went up to a pretty 45 degree on one end and you know a little bit like a 60 degree point on the other. And you see I'm just kind of working around the spot welds, peeling up on the edges. I cut the center on the top above the firewall, not even messing with the spot welds. And you see I'm actually under the window channel and I'm just cutting right down around. Being that this whole lower panel will separate with the top. There's no reason to mess with all the spot welds and remove the two of them. I do like to take 
the panels off if I can, mostly in one piece. The reason is, you can see there's brackets and stuff on these panels, and there's measurements I'll go back and I'll use as a reference as we're putting the new panels on. You can see the cowl panel's been removed. I'm working on the inner fender brackets. Careful on these brackets because I am gonna save these brackets. I did weld them to the frame rail already. I wasn't thinking ahead on this one. If I had to redo it, I probably would have left them completely off the frame rail and screwed them in as a reference point and then pulled them off completely. It would have made getting the firewall in a little bit easier, but this proves you can take the firewall off with those brackets on. You can already tell just from this far away the condition of this firewall under the dashboard and how rotted away it is. Look really good on your car. I haven't seen too many of these cars where this area doesn't get rotten really bad. So this is the best way to really, versus doing all the little patches, just replace the whole panel. And honestly, for the price of this panel through AMD, I think it's well worth it. The installation, as you'll see in the future, also is not very hard compared to a lot of other panels. Another thing I want to point out, I do have a three quarter inch square rectangular bar going from the A pillar to the other A pillar just to kind of hold everything in place. I don't think this car is going to move. It's pretty solid up there, but this is my insurance policy, putting that on there. So when I go back through and I take my measurements that if something bumps into it, there's less of a chance of it moving. With removing these panels, you can see I kind of work with a system. I basically worked on the two front brackets and I worked my way from the A pillars my, all the way down. I didn't have to remove the bottom firewall to floor pan because I knew I was replacing this. But you, if you're doing it just a firewall, you'll have to go back through and then just work your way through the bottom removing the spot welds. Now that all the old parts are removed, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the edges around the car where we're gonna be welding so we can apply weld through primer. And then we're moving on, as you can see right now, to the new firewall and we're gonna prep that in the cow panel. I'm using a red or a yellow Scotch-Brite on the surface prep disc with a roll lock and just going through everywhere, not digging into the panel, getting down to the bare metal so we can have a good weld with our spot welder or our MIG welder. If you're at home and you don't have a spot welder, I'm assuming, and you're MIG welding a lot of stuff, you're gonna to have to go through these areas that I'm cleaning up on bare metal, and you're gonna to have to do a 5 16th, eight millimeter hole punch every inch, inch and a quarter. And that's gonna be your rosette welds. So just what I do, I already had this panel test fitted on the car, mark where they're gonna go, and then go back through it and get ready to set up your holes. The installation of this firewall, same way it came out, you see we walked it right over, set it in place. What I'm doing, the top needs to roll back right now. So I hooked a pair of vice grips on the top and you see we're on the back of the car on a very strong support and I'm just slowly ratcheting it in place, rolling the firewall back a little bit and then clamping the front brackets under the A-pillars. I'm doing the same thing on this side. It didn't take much to get it to roll back down, a little bit of helping with a body hammer, and you're good to go. It's stuff like this you're gonna have to expect when putting these panels in. This is another reason why we build these cars on frame jigs. If this car is not on a frame jig and you're ratcheting this thing together, I mean, you have a chance of something else flexing and the firewall not moving. Right now, I know we're not gonna move these I-beams so we can go ratchet it and pull on this car without worrying about anything else. Again, same thing with how we remove the firewall, clamping the firewall, same thing. I start on the A-pillars, I'm working my way down on both sides, and then we'll go ahead and clamp the center after we're done with this side. The reason I do this bottom last, I feel this is the easier to pull together that if you're clamped down here first, rolling the top over is gonna be a little bit harder. It's gonna fight you. As you can see, we still kinda of had to go up a little bit on the firewall just to modify it slightly. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the monkey on the stick and just, just aligning this thing and making it 
95% better than it was. You know, we were good, but we're just trying to get everything where it's as perfect as we can go, especially since this is the base structure of the car and the outer body panels build off this and the whole front end is gonna come off this firewall. So we wanna make sure we're right on in place. What I'm doing right here, same thing with the monkey on the stick, was the floor pan was sitting just um, a little bit lower than the firewall. So what I'm doing, I'm going up to the roof panel in the, the support structure where it's the strongest and we're gonna just ratchet. You could see that firewall move down just ever so slightly and that aligned the floor even closer. Again, stuff like this, you're gonna have to expect to do constantly on any body panel you're replacing. The stampings aren't 100% perfect. Now that the lower firewall's in place, we're gonna go ahead and take all our measurements one more time. We need to now make sure everything is where it needs to be sitting before we go and start the weld up phase. Saying this, I also didn't show it, but I took the top cowl panel and also put it on this car and verified all those measurements before the weld up phase. Because if we get this wrong, there it's gonna be harder to adjust the cowl panel, being that this is the whole base for the cowl panel. Same thing as clamping, I'm starting on the two brackets in the back that come across to the cow panel. You can see I did put spot weld holes for rosette welds and I'm going to use the MIG welder on this upper A pillar area because my spot welder can't get behind it. So even what I have, I do a lot of MIG welding on these cars still. Same thing you would do at home. You're going to see in a minute where I'm at a more advantage with the spot welder that it's faster, it's a little bit stronger, and it saves a bunch of time, especially in the cleanup process. But all in all, if you're good at MIG welding, this is completely doable. You see there's not a lot of cleanup on these spot welds, so it's not a big deal. At this point, I completed all my MIG welding on both sides. So I take out the spot welder, and again, I'm gonna work my way from the top down. If you're at home and don't have this expensive spot welder, no big deal. What you're going to do right here is just continue your MIGWELL rosette holes all the way down. Everywhere I'm squeezing the trigger, that's where you're going to put a MIGWELL hole. Same thing on the bottom. What I like to do at something like this is take a vice grip that you can weld in between. I have special vice grips for that. And you squeeze right around your weld hole weld that and then move your vice grips down that ensures you have a really tight bond and everything is right up against each other with nowhere for the weld to fail i am a little spoiled with this pro spot that you see it's obviously sped up here but the pro spot does all the squeezing and everything else all i have to do is hit the button and i set the time and everything else and it lets go whenever the weld is completely closed it's a little bit heavier this I would say this gun together is probably 35 45 pounds and getting in some of these positions a little bit awkward but again it beats MIG splatter falling down on you you know trying to weld through weld through primer which anyone that's done that it looks easy sometimes but man it wants to blow out and there's just so many issues versus welding two pieces of clean metal together but if you want the car to be project protected over time i think you really need the weld through primer what's also nice about this spot welder it the heat signature is so concentrated it doesn't burn the weld through primer but just in the actual spot weld areas so that's another thing about advantage on building the car with these spot welders for longevity we're putting the cow panel on the bottom of the firewall now. The firewall is completely 100% welded up and I also cleaned up all the welds where the cow panel was sitting on it. We, we had to do that to make them smooth so the cow panel sits flush. We'll go ahead and we're going to clamp again the top center. We're working our way out where the windshield sits in the car and we're just working our way to the outside. We're now we're gonna adjust the height of the cow panel. So we're gonna take our monkey on the stick, we're gonna grab it on the bottom. I already did a quick measurement in the mock-up phase knowing that we're a little bit too low. So you'll see we're gonna get a good bite on it and then we'll get our tape measure. And again, we're going for 33 inches. So just a couple pumps, 
work on our 33 inches, and then we're gonna clamp our firewall in place. We put a couple more clamps on it, and what I like to do with something like this, I am MIG welding it, and I can't reach it with the spot welder, so I went through and I put sheet metal screws from one side of the panel all the way to the other. Normally, I'd work my way from the center out. I kind of didn't do it in this situation. They are screws. I can adjust them. It's not the welding phase where we're permanently stuck here. So if I have any issues, we can remove the screws and redo them. This is another one of those panels that's so complex. I think for the price that AMD offers to sell it to you for, it, it's very hard to make all the patches if there's lots of damage in this firewall. Moving on to the MIG welding on this, like I said with the screws, I like to start when I'm welding in the center of a long run paddle. You see, what I'm doing, I'm working any highs down and out towards the edges. So you're not stuck with a bow in the middle or a high spot that you can't get down. This is really straightforward. We're just welding. I'm using the clamps and everything to help manipulate the panel towards each other. And I'm pulling the screws out as I go along. The screws are also holding everything in place. This panel can't move anywhere. I mean, I got tons of screws in it, tons of clamps. I think on all these panels, you can't put enough screws and clamps on there. I mean, the more you can support these pieces to make sure they don't move, the better off the final outcome is gonna be. You'll see now we're working our way towards the edge of the cow panel. Everything is not welded up top yet. The cow panel I did completely opposite. We're kind of working our way from the bottom towards the windshield. But you see I worked my way all the way over to the edge. Now we're back on the center with the MIG welder and I'm working our way towards the driver's side. I like to work with the passenger side first. I think personally for me this runs longer and it's easier on the passenger side because everything's smooth. Up around here you have a couple of these indentations like right here around the brake master we had to go ahead and just pie cut it a little bit the the two panels didn't meet perfect it's good on the one side and then three inches later on this other side it just wasn't following the curve right so just take the cutoff wheel we pie cut it and you see i'm going to roll the edge in place and those two panels will match up when i weld up the seam and re-clean it up grinding it you're never gonna know that this whole little repair was done. And be again, early, like I said earlier, be prepared for these small little repairs you're gonna have to do. These aftermarket panels are awesome, but they are not perfect. I will also say what's nicer about this car and how it makes the video editing a lot easier on this whole project is the whole front end on this car is taken off. I know if you have an e-body, most of the time, you're gonna have inner fenders on there, at least radiator support. There's gonna be a lot of stuff that you are gonna work around. So I'm aware of that. I got lucky on this whole deal that, I mean, this whole car was wrecked in the front and pretty much everything up here was destroyed. It'll be nicer when it's done, knowing that everything's new and there's no rust on the panels. But at home, I get it. You might have to pull the inner panel the fenders off and remove them temporarily and then weld them on or pry them back. So just try to work around it, try to bend them, manipulate them, move them out of the place. We're working our way up the A pillars now. You can see, and we're just moving in on the window channel where the spot welder can't get to. These again will have to be cleaned up when they're done, but you see this is the welding pattern and about where I'm gonna weld and I welded the lower firewall in the same position. We're back on the spot welder now for the windshield channel. You could see I'm working my way from the center towards the outside. I'm leaving all the vice grips in place until they get in my way and I just move them. Same thing if you're MIG welding. Keep the vice grips there, keep everything held down solid, no gaps or anything, and then move it as needed. We're also welding the upper cowl panel to the lower firewall on those tabs and there's two other brackets underneath. You'll see I'll reach for them. 
We're going all the way as far as we can where the spot welder can reach. And you saw we did MIG weld about two inches in where I know it's not gonna be able to get to. I wanna reiterate that everything on both of these panels you see is bare metal top bottom. I think that's the best way to go for the cleanest welds, whether you're doing this spot welder or a MIG welder. I'm also making sure there is a thin coat of weld through primer between everything. We don't want bare metal exposed anywhere from the elements without some kind of coating to protect it. As I was saying earlier, now that we MIG welded a bunch of these parts, we're gonna have to go through, my son's helping me, he wanted to earn some extra money for something he wanted to buy, so his mother told him to come out and work with me in the garage for a little bit, but we're going through and we're gonna grind through this uh, firewall, clean everything up, making sure when it's all said and done, you don't see ugly welds or anything else like this. There is gonna be seam sealer over this area, but really we're not gonna go heavy on it. You know, we can control it. We don't, we're trying to not make a factory mess job here. So a little bit of seam sealer just to cover up the edges. We want clean welds. We want everything to take pride in our work and look smooth. I'm using an 80 grit on this belt sander. Also, we are using an 80 grit on a, a roll lock on the three inch surface prep disc. My son's in there prepping the floor pan now for the shifter install, cleaning that out to bare metal as I'm going back through because I didn't want him to grind too much of the welds off. So I had him leave the peaks on there and I just come through one time and just cleaned everything up to just finalize it because that's the number one thing about these MIG welds. You don't want to take too much off of it and weaken the weld. So there's a fine balance in ACB between all of that. Now that we had our floor pan in our bare metal, we put some weld through primer on there. We cut our front hole for our shifter brackets and everything else. And I'd already pre-staged and marked all these console brackets, shifter brackets and everything else. And we're gonna go ahead and screw them back in place. You see, I, I located them with screws earlier. We put four screws on them, hold the corners down, and then we're gonna go ahead this one bracket. I wasn't able to put screws in in the front because there's just nowhere to screw for the, um, the pivot for the shifter. So we'll just go ahead and I'm gonna measure it off the hole we cut that was stamped into the floor and the shifter bracket itself. I think it was two and seven eighths in front of the console bracket and it was, I think, an inch and a quarter from where it curved down to the hole going into it. This is why I keep a lot of the old parts. This is why I cut around these old parts when I remove them, just so as a reference point and something I can go off of because there's no way you can know exactly where everything goes unless you just do one model of car every single time. And I, I've done, you see on the video, I've done other models of car that we just, if I go to cut something off, we know it worked. We're gonna go ahead and keep that piece and that's how we're gonna reinstall it. On this car, I was lucky. There is also a Challenger exactly like it next to it that I did verify some of the marks too. I did put the old console in place, the owner's getting a new one, but I just wanted to verify. I like to do this, this again, peace of mind that I know that console, when he goes to bolt it in place after the paint is done on this car, that there's gonna be no issues there. Go ahead through, I put a bunch of holes in this thing and we're gonna go ahead and rosette weld it again. This is probably overkill for this bracket, as many holes I put in there. But I also like these brackets because I feel like they support the floor a little bit more, especially in that center where all the front floor pan and the toe pans meet up. So I think welding this only makes everything here stronger and less of a chance of having issues down the road. And anytime I try to do something like that, we try to focus on strengthening the car first and then we're gonna make it look as best we can. And I know what the owner's goal of this car is. He cares about this car, not the flex, not to have any issues. He's putting a bunch of horsepower in it and he doesn't wanna worry about it. A few more welds on this bracket and this installation is gonna be finished. We're gonna clean up the welds at this point and then we'll take you on for the video for the final walk around. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video on the firewall and cow installation on the 73 Challenger. We don't have time for the doors and I'll show you the doors on the way out. They are worse than we thought, just like everything on the car. So we're waiting on one more door skin to get here and then we'll address that video in the future. On these e-bodies, if you can't see, this is why we ripped the firewall and cow panel off. You see there's rust everywhere. It's all rotted out, especially the e-bodies look like they rot really bad around here and around this area. I could stick my hand through it. It just gets worse and worse. Um, if you have one of these cars, really check these area. It would really stink to do a nice paint job and a full restoration and underneath the dash, it's all rotting away or anytime it rains, water comes in there. So. Take a look at the firewall. You see this video should help you on doing one. We'll set it aside and we'll go over what we have on the car. <coughs> you see, this is the AMD cow panel. It fit really well. We verified all our measurements that we initially took our 33 inches, our firewall, Everything fit good there. We had to do a little bit pull in, but real happy with it. Being that I have the AMD full floor pan and the firewall, this curvature matched up perfect. So real happy with that. We did put the inner fender support brackets. If you see on our old firewall, you could see where it was rusted. They are just screwed in place right now on both sides. We're gonna wait till the front end's installed before we go welding on these, just in case we have to do some modification. You can see we did our window channel. That's all in bare metal. And everything in bare metal, we're gonna put in etching primer. We're just, I'm showing you the bare metal and then I'll spray it tonight just to make sure the car doesn't rust while it's sitting around here. We went on, we did the center console bracket and the shifter. The owner had all his parts here that he's reusing. So I went ahead and instead of, you know, I took my base measurements and then went off with the parts that he's putting back in the car just so we know that's going to fit. Uh, we did drill the hole for the shifter and inside here I did end up cleaning up the whole firewall um, just where our MIG welder spots came through. It's just going to look that much better. I did the only thing I did that wouldn't have been completely factory for sure was I welded up the seam you know you see right there and on the other side I just I felt like the gap was a little much here and even with the spot welder pulling in I just wanted to make sure everything was held that little bit extra tighter and uh, held in place so uh, put in a little MIG weld there's not gonna hurt there's gonna be seam seal or covering this whole area but you see height wise and everything the gaps are really good everything fits good the MIG welder is just an insurance policy so we'll go back here I'll show you why we don't have time for the doors you can see there's a good half an inch close of uh, Bondo this whole door has Bondo on it we knew about that one and then this one's kind of just rotted away so we're gonna we're waiting on the door skin for this one and we'll go ahead and just do that on a whole separate video if we can and address that these should be the last parts the old panels that we're cutting off this challenger after that all brand new metal should be going up back on it so stay tuned for this build we got other ones coming up and uh, I hope you enjoy it the e-body challengers the firewall and cows i think are some of the worst areas on these cars um, hopefully this video helped on fixing or replacing them i do usually patch them if they're not as bad as this one but you see with this one it is doable to fix it it's not that big of a job you could just i think move the inner fenders out of the way since i did leave those brackets on there and drop your firewall in place so Stay tuned for other videos, like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and tell other car people about this. We got more to come. Thanks again.